Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. I am delighted to be joined by Maria, who is in Norway right now. We're so glad that we're doing Los Angeles all the way to Norway with her fantastic film, The Tongues. For those that haven't seen it, let's take a look at a clip. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's a real honor to have you and I can't tell you how much I loved, loved, loved your film. Uh, so thank you for sharing it with us. Um, I also would love to know, because I, I want to know the correct pronunciation for, for how you say it in, 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 the, in the language. So can you share that with us? Yeah, so the tongues is uh, in Sami, it's called Nuchumat. Nuchumat, see, so everyone learned a new word today. There you go. Fantastic. Um, I, I, your film was probably one of the most moving short films I've ever seen. Um, breathtaking acting, unbelievable story, and a, a, a sad story that exists uh, because it's happened to many, many women in different circumstances, but particularly in this instant, and it's horrifying, but a wonderful way of two sisters coming together and, and getting, and deservably getting their own back on their abuser. Um, for those that haven't seen your film, tell us a little bit about the synopsis and a little bit about where the story was inspired from. Yeah. Uh, so the tongues uh, is a. We uh, go straight into uh, the action of a woman being raped uh, in the tundra in a snowstorm, and we follow her in the immediate aftermath of this rape, where she tries to kind of um, uh, uh, gather her uh, her body up again and she's fighting for her soul survival. So it's a survival story. So her uh, in this uh, landscape where she tries to battle the, the aftermath of this rape and her sister is looking for her at the same time. Uh, and um, the predator is still out there in the tundra. So uh, it's in a way uh, two sisters uh, fighting for their survival and um, and the origin of this story uh, came about from a workshop actually uh, in um, Imaginative in Toronto. Uh, we were gathered many, many different indigenous uh, scriptwriters, um, and we were making kind of one idea together. Uh, it was an idea about two sisters who were exiled from the community. Um, so when we went home after the workshop, me and my sister Inge, we worked together. And we kind of had to figure out what kind of action in our um, culture, the Sami culture, will make uh, you be exiled. Like what, will, what kind of action will actually make you be shunned? Uh, and that it's not so um, many things you can do actually to kind of be um, um, exiled, but uh, there has been a lot of happenings of women who, um, when they get raped, uh, uh, and especially if they press charges uh, and stand for their story, um, many people take the side of the predator uh, the, and not the survivors. Uh, and so many times they kind of, because of the rumors, the harassing, they feel that they don't want to be a part of that place or village anymore. So they move from that place to kind of protect themselves. Um, and then, uh, of course, we made a story around that idea because it's not about, you know, females 
being exiled, but maybe the fear of what will happen if they will not get uh, their justice uh, because it's uh, so important for um, the main character to uh, kind of win over um, the rapist. Uh, yeah. So she kind of fights for, for her place in the community. Well, I, I mean, for, you know, uh, Imaginative are one of our great partners and, and there's so much great work coming out. So I'm glad that you collaborated, um, you know, with them and the ideas. But this is a powerful story and um, it's a very important one. And I've never wanted uh, someone to be hurt so much as this predator in this film. It was it was a really, really hard watch, but so gratifying to see these two sisters deserveably, um, you know, uh, get justice um, in, in their form. It was magical. Um, I was, I, I don't think, I, I couldn't breathe watching your film. I, I and, and it's funny because breath, is a very big part of the film, the, the, the way the sound of the breath is very big part. And as I heard the breath, I, I was not breathing because it was so intense. Um, there's not dialogue, you know, pretty much not dialogue in this. It's it's pretty much, you know, a lot of, you know, sound effects and, 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 and visuals that were very close up, which were very powerful. Did you always know you wanted to go down this route because it was incredible uh, the way it came across on screen? Yeah, it was always the plan that uh, we wanted uh, the viewing experience to be very uh, bodily, uh, that they wanted, in a way, people to kind of uh, be in her place, that they could feel the coldness of the snow, the weather, and the hurt she was going through in her body, and kind of also be kind of almost inside of her in some way. To uh, uh, the idea was to make people kind of be in her perspective in the in her journey so it was always the plan to make uh, uh, the, for example the breath idea uh, was always part of when we envisioned the film that you're supposed to kind of always hear her closeness and always be very close to the to the character but also because we wanted to kind of uh, even though they're on a big big tundra it's very like claustrophobic what she's going through. So we wanted to uh, kind of show that it's very claustrophobic uh, feeling that she's going through that even though she's in a big, big place, she feels very haunted on. Uh, she's very afraid that he will always come back. Uh, so even though it's big, big landscape and a big uh, kind of possibility to hide, but she doesn't feel it like that. She feels very uh, closed into uh, so that's, uh, we wanted to make that feeling very strong. You, you, when we were at the film festival yesterday, and of course this was a part of our celebration of indigenous filmmakers, storytellers, and, and themes. Um, you know, I, I love the beautiful passage that, you know, you, you said yesterday, just, just about like the importance of, of um, indigenous storytellers and, and, and having films told by um, storytellers. And I just, just want to know in the context of this film and and the part of the world that it that it exists and also you know for you um you know talking about you know uh, indigenous stories and, and how we need to have more and more of that told by people from those communities tell us a little bit about like how important that is to you as a filmmaker and and and, and you know what you're involved continue to be involved in as a filmmaker as well yeah uh no it's always been very important Important for me, you know, um, the ownership between the uh, storyteller and the story. Uh, I think, especially uh, the Sami community, probably like many other indigenous communities, uh, that we have this tradition of stories. We have always grown up with storytelling as a tool of, uh, you know, uh, raising our children. We tell stories to tell them to be careful in the world. And the storytelling uh, has always kind of, uh, on yeah, still today is very part of our like uh, community, uh, and uh, and the old stories uh, are kind of not stories. It's uh, our way of looking at the world. Uh, for example, people who are not from the Sami community can use words like Sami folklore, uh, storytelling, but it's not folklore. 
And I think if you're not Sami, for example, or indigenous, you don't view it from that lens. You use it more like a story, but it's, it's storytellers telling the truth, really. And if you don't view our truth as a truth, how can you really tell it even? So that yeah, is uh, very important for me. And I, uh, yeah, <laughs> and I, I think well, um, I, I want to uh, kind of, that's very clear also that it is, it is important that we are also able to tell our own stories. Absolutely. And I love that you work with your sister um, because there must be such a, a wonderful element of trust with each other, um, you know, having grown up together. I think that's so, so wonderful. Um, I'm just curious also for you. I mean, I, I'm still thinking about your film. Um, I honestly think it was so incredibly powerful and and such an incredible vision, the way that you shot it and, and, and chose to tell the story. And I couldn't imagine it being told by anybody else but you. But I'm just curious about what has the reaction been? Um, because I'm sure you got quite a powerful reaction in, in, in taking us to film festivals and other places. What's the reaction been like? For you? Yeah, it's been uh, like very good reception. Uh, um, it's uh, of course we were not able to screen it so much for people like in real life before uh, we had most of our festival around it during covid but uh, but i have gotten so much good feedback at one of our first screenings uh, just before covid hit it was uh, people uh, in the cinema they're like like visibly or how to say uh, they're like shaking in their seat and they're like feeling very on their body and some people get very triggered, of course, because it's a very strong story and it's a very raw and also very violent and uh, very close to uh, the trauma. So people get triggered, people are angry, they are moved. Uh, there's always some kind of uh, reaction. But what is interesting is that all different cultures react differently to different parts. Uh, for example, um, many Samis react mostly on the rape they think the rape is quite uh, uh, heavy to watch and also the uh, the revenge on the boy on the mm -hmm. Tommy boy people kind of feel is very uh, impactful scene but for some others there are like uh, uh, for example the scene where the main character runs and she has those flashbacks of the rape that can be have been very triggering for many because that is something that happens so much to people who have been raped that they have these flashbacks that are so um, uh, like uh, impacting on their whole body. So yeah. they're so very different reactions to different parts, and uh, it's been quite nice to hear the feelings. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, listen, as, as hard and heavy, but as an important story it was to be told, um, you know, I, I really do think you've got, you and your sister have got tremendous artistic vision. Um, and I really can't wait to see, you know, many more of your films. Um, and so what is next for you? Thank you. And <laughs> we're working now uh, on our first feature. We are at the end hall of writing the feature scripts. Uh, so uh, hopefully we'll manage to uh, shoot it uh, uh, in, I would say, winter of 2023. Uh, so that's what we're aiming for now. So hopefully then we can screen that film to a wide yes. audience too. I hope so too, and I hope that we can, uh, you know, invite invite you and the team to, to New Filmmakers LA when the world opens up again. But um, but no, thank you so much. But I just want to lastly finish on for you as a director, as you know, a writer, as you know, uh, an artist. Um, for any filmmakers out there, um, do you have kind of any advice or things that you kind of go by that, that support you on your journey as an artist? If I will give a. a uh, um, advice that I kind of have learned through um, being a director is that your intuition is kind of your biggest tool. Uh, if you uh, follow your intuition, you will actually get quite far because that is kind of your inner core. And it took me a while to understand that sometimes the intuition can be enough uh, to make very good decisions. 
Uh, you don't need to always understand every di directing uh, decision because directing is art. And sometimes you just can follow the stream of the gut uh, um, instincts. You will get uh, so much magic out of it. And don't like um, uh, go against it. Just follow that uh, stream of creativity. Uh, it will lead to very, very great places, I think. I love that. I love that. Well, listen. Thank you so much um, for bringing your film to us. Truly a powerful experience and, and a really, really important film. Um, so thank you for bringing it to us and we're looking forward to your next project and, and thank you for being part of New Filmmakers LA. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you so much for having me here and the film screening there. It, we're so grateful all of us. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, we appreciate you.